Hello, friends. It's Thursday. And while that doesn't have quite the same meaning as it does for some of us, but it does, for this community at least, mean it's Mass Effect time. Oh, hi, Miz. Thank you so much for wanting to be a part of this community. We love having you so much. Hello, hello. Yes, hype indeed. Oh, Jan. Oh man, 10 months. Thank you so much. Y'all are such beacons of kindness in this community, both of you. Thank you. That just might be, oh, Necro. Thank you for starting us off, friend. Thank you so much. You're always so kind and generous. An example to us all. Oh shit, y'all have already started a hype drain. Look what you've done. <laughs> she says in a playful admonition. <laughs> oh, miss. That's very sweet of you. Y'all are always so nice to each other. Thank you for epitomizing that empathy and kindness and generosity that we just love to see, right? Love to see it. Yeah, it does consume battery like you're running your car when you're trying to watch Twitch on your phone. It's wild. <laughs> Speaking of, hello, Titan. Not to be outdone. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all are just blowing through this hype train. All the confetti, all the neon emotes. Is that how you say it? Neon cat? Neon? Um, also, for those of you who, who love a me and my meme lord aptitudes, I definitely am currently editing our Dragon Age video for today, and I definitely use Meow Cat. His name is Thurston Waffles. T-H-U-R-S-T-O-N, Thurston, Waffles. Cat after my own heart. I love that meme. Um, it actually crashed earlier and I was like, I can't deal with this today. And I went back and like, you know, got ready for stream and came back. It resolved itself. It didn't crash. I'm so thankful. I'd spent so much time editing today. I know, Rook, I love that cat so much. Ooh, lock fun. What are you cooking? Well, you're not here right now. I'll ask you when you get back. <laughs> Literally said BRB. Oh, salad cat armchair? Is that the one you're talking about? The one where the cat, the white cat's like pouting over his like half eaten salad and the lady's yelling at him. I literally was um, out with friends the other day and somebody had just the cat, just his like face as they're like decal on their back window of their car, I screamed. I was like, look at the salad cat. And Merlin's like, oh my God, what? <laughs> I always um, get really excited and exclaim loudly. And it always frightens my husband when he's driving. <laughs> oh, nuts. Eight months, my dude. Yes. He was so nice. <gasps> Is it Kylian's? I hope I said that right. Thank you so much for your generosity, friend. That's so sweet. Yeah, Xavier, he always gets, uh, he, he never gets mad at me. It's just like, a, oh, he, his fight or flight gets keyed up. And um, he's like, what is it? I can handle Kyle. Kyle, we've got. Thank you, Kyle. And Kelsey, look at you guys. <gasps> Y'all are getting so many cute puppy and kitty emotes. Wow, I didn't know they were doing that. That's fucking great. <gasps> Rook, I'm so proud of you. Kelsey, thank you. That's confetti with my hands. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm slightly delirious because I haven't been sleeping well and I've started working out again and I have a lot of physical therapy that I'm doing and I'm also trying to like uh, lose some of my COVID weight at the same time. So I don't know if I'm getting enough calories and I'm just like, whoa, you know, the lightheaded woozy you get? That or I think my body's just adjusting. I don't know. But we're here either way. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. Ugh, Kyle, I'm not actually allowed to eat breakfast because your girl has to stick to uh, intermittent fasting to handle endometriosis better. So I only, I, I haven't had breakfast in years now. Um, 11 to five is my window. I'm only allowed to eat from 11 to five. And it sucks. I miss breakfast. So now I just have waffles for lunch or dinner. Oh, Neo, you sweet thing. Thank you so much for being kind. Oh, you coined the phrase to get you a supportive? Oh no, <laughs> Xavier, why? He also tells that story a lot. He knew exactly what I meant. It's not like he didn't have to suffer through like the peripheries of law school when I was going through it. He knows. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Garrus, do you have anything to say for yourself? He's, he's a good egg. Oh my god, Rook, Jesus Christ. Oh, you can't even see him, because I'm snuggling him too much. Okay, he's gonna go back into his chair. He's, uh, the pillow's very... It's, it's a large pillow. I literally put him in Merlin's chair and I have it just like sitting here next to me. <laughs> <laughs> a face that could stop a reaper. I love it. Brilliant. Yes. Favorite body pillow on the Citadel. I love it. It's very good. Oh, man. Oh, no. Yep. Those are true relationship goals. When, you're, uh, when your partner lets you pour champagne all over them. Oh, man. Woo! Okay. As... The title dictates. Today, we're going to do Citadel 3. But before that, we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Because we have access to this new area, we've got a few... a hey, Ms. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to have to go and scan. We, it has to be done. And I'm upset because I had 100%, and it's no longer 100%. They keep tacking on more things to do. It's like when you thought you finished a project and somebody's like, oh, well, um, can you also do this? And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I got that. And you finish that and they're like, oh, ah, shit, I actually need you to do this for me too. And I'm like, I could have just tackled this in one go, but all right, I guess. So oh, we're doing it. We're doing the things. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your generosity. It's so nice to come into stream and, and see everyone being sweet to each other. That is why I love this community so much, because y'all are so good to each other. And I just I am here to soak in those good vibes and hopefully give some to y'all as well. We're going to get into this. If I can get my mouse ready. Bam. All right. Home sweet home. Shep sweet Shep. We're here, so. <laughs> A baby. All right. Um, we did talk to everybody last time post Rannoch. So I, I think I've just set us up to where we're good to go. Let's check our mail. I'm not sure we checked mail last time. No, we're good. Never mind. Never mind. Commander. Okay, good. It looks like we are situated. Ah. <sighs> Look how earthy it looks. It's the first one we've come across that's even remotely earth looking. I know we've had other habitable planets before, but. Okay, so I'm assuming that now that we've taken care of that, this is one of the places that we need to scan. It's so big though, which means it's uh, going to be difficult to 
get all the way before the reapers come. Or not. Do I just stand corrected? Apparently I do, fuck. All right, so let me check my handy dandy notebook. Okay. It looks like we supposedly have another quest first. Let me, let me double check. Did I fuck something up? I keep trying to press J. Ugh. No, not sure leave. This one. The fossil. Oh no. Is this something? No, okay. So these are the things we're trying to look for. Okay, good. Oh. I'm so worried about missing literally anything. That makes me very paranoid. Especially because you have to do so much in a specific order or else you don't have access to it again. <sighs> oh, is this new? Okay, so these definitely we've done. Argus, <gasps> you're new. Okay. I think this is one of the places we need to go. All right. So those two are closest. Oh, so is he. I didn't check our fuel either. <laughs> We're gonna find the fuck out. I found something. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Canrum. Canrum is a small, rocky world with a trace atmosphere of methane and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deposits of carbon. Canrum was the site of the warlord Chiagar's defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during the Krogan rebellions. While this band was not especially powerful, Chiagar was a female warlord and one of the few remaining fertile females at that. Oh no. She had, through viciousness and cunning, parlayed her unique value into position of power. We love that for her. Krogan males competed for the right to join her band and lie with her. When Chiagar's death was announced, vengeful male Krogan admirers near and far swore blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousand of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or, or through assassination. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, a Krogan assassin is definitely not something I ever imagined. Maybe they hired him out. To this day, many Krogan proudly proclaim that they have the blood of Shiagar. What do we get? Ooh, an optics array. Okay. Okay, let's try to get this shit done before we have friends. Okay, so definitely want to try to. Come on. Oh god, oh god. Oh, we're at 50% too. That means that this is our last one. Perfect. And we're out. Bye. Faster Have a good time. Successful. Okay, we're full up on fuel. Thank fuck. Okay. Oh, hello? <gasps> Pinnacle Station. The asteroid base Pinnacle Station was originally constructed by the Tyrians to function as a concealed command center during the Krogan Rebellions. It has been retrofitted as a military training facility for all high-level special operations teams employed by the Council. The station's combat simulator allows teams to train under a variety of hazardous conditions. It's still here! I mean, there's no point for the Reapers to destroy it, but I just, I like that it's Signal still here. Confirmed. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay.
There we go. Ugh. Did we get it? Okay, good. <laughs> My mouse was at the end of its rope. Okay, I don't think we heralded them quite yet, but definitely want to be careful. Okay, so these are also close. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Hold on, hold on. Shh, hold on. <gasps> no, no, no. Ah, fuck. It didn't go in. At least we found it. Evasion successful. Damn it. I thought I was close enough to get into it, but the drift was not strong with this one. Fuck. All right. So that one's really cool. Oh, a round boy. Mighty. Rotund. Okay. Man, we're kind of in a shit spot. I found something. Okay. Cameron. It's a terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and argon. The surface is scorching hot, primarily composed of iron with deposits of nickel. Like Wuo, Cameron is tidlocked to the blue giant, forever looking into the face of the Gorgon. I feel like I should know what a Gorgon is. But alas, I do not. Power relays, here for it. Okay. Oh, that's everything here. So we can just leave. So, how balls, oh, can't be ballsy, must leave. Fuel is low. <gasps> oh, fuck. Okay, thank God. Reapers eluded. Woo! God damn it. Okay, let me, I don't remember which one. I know the Citadel has a, oh, but if I go in there, it might. Okay, this is a Krogan DMZ. I know they have fuel. I'm always afraid of accidentally starting a quest or something, because you never know. Especially because we have to do Citadel 3 soon. Okay. <sighs> because we are going to do Citadel... This Citadel 3, I'm not going to push my luck with that system. I just... It's not smart. I don't want to die. Okay, these were all 100. Come back for him. Hades Nexus. We haven't done that one. Or Ninma cluster. Oh no, I, I jinxed it. Oh shit. I didn't get anything. Oh no, this isn't good. Well, fuck. Faster than light jump successful. That sucked. I should have done that more strategically. I was just curious and I let my curiosity run away with me. Look at that big old boy! And I'm not getting any Reaper presence here. Ugh. Hate that. Did they have fuel here? because we got oh no we gotta go um Evasion shit. Successful. I have to go in very particularly let's see if this gets us close enough where I can respond quickly oh it didn't that was actually not ideal I need to be able to get out of here Reapers eluded what about this 
This is good. Faster than light, not successful. <laughs> that was kind of close. So we didn't get anything out of that one. All right. Those are mercifully close together, but this one is not. Signal confirmed. Mm. Asteria. A habitable planet known for its arid, sulfurous deserts. Asteria is colonized near the poles. To avoid the uncomfortable temperatures, it can reach 65 degrees Celsius in more southern latitudes. And unfortunately, I am from the one country in the world that refuses to use the metric system. So I don't know what that means. I know that I make my tea at 80 degrees Celsius. I cook in Celsius. Um, but 65 doesn't translate for me. While the seas contain primitive animal life, little of it can live on land, leaving the soil to hardy plants that can survive in the extreme heat. Asteria is home to thriving humans and Asari agrarian colonies, but little in the way of manufacturing and mining. All right. Carbon dioxide concentrations can reach 2,500 parts per million in Asteria's atmosphere. Citizens should carry a supplemental oxygen for children and the elderly. Consult with local governments to discuss animal companion detection systems or other preparatory measures. Alliance Bulletin. Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. Also, the in traffic is prohibited. Good thing I'm not a civilian. There we go. Oh, a frigate. That's nice. Nice. Okay. So we're at 50. What did we get? Did we get this one? This is mine. Thank you. Nice. Okay, 100%. Yes. Nice. Love it. Evasion successful. Oh, many. Oh, no. At least there aren't that many here. Any mini planets. I found something. Ooh, hold on. Makaira. A small rock planet. Makaira's thin atmosphere and high albedo? Albedo? I have no idea what that means. Keeps it from being much hotter than it is. The crust is high in sodium oxide, giving the planet a whitish tinge. But... I, I can't scan? You told me to scan. Oh, oh no, there's a little boy! A tiny! Copus! <laughs> it's Makaira's largest moon! It's a desolate place with an extremely thin atmosphere. Its crust is largely silica-based, and there are no signs of water. Like its parent planet, its high albedo keeps it from being... A total inferno. I don't know what that means. I know what inferno means. I don't know what albedo means. Um, other than being maybe a weird form of alfredo. And when occluded by Makaira, its temperatures can be nearly tolerable. Its low gravity can easily be countered by a vehicular or personal mass effect field for comfortable exploration. There we go. Obelisk of Karza! That looks good. Okay, so, 50. Um, scan here. Where's the last... God damn it, there it is. But at least Reverse we can come completed. back and it'll stay that way. We better find some fuel on this one. Are there little planets in... I see you. Signal confirmed. Hold on, hold on. Everybody hold their horses. Oh, 100. Measly. Tiny. Mm! God, no! I may have fucked us. Ah! 
Dobrovolsky, another near Earth sized rock planet without much atmosphere to speak of. Dobrovolsky is home to Altai Mineral Works, a local extraction company noted for its success in ESO refining. The planet itself provides aluminum for local fabricators. That's a good type of Grisha to be, which are churning out habitats at an astonishing rate for a system that has no garden planets. With its ore supply coming all the way from the Shell system, Dobrovolsky is... Oh, it also kind of sounds almost Russian-y. I love it. A Grisha verse. Uh, it's, it's book setting, Shadow and Bone. Uh, Ravka is kind of fantasy Russia. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dobrovolsky is held up as the proof of the miners' cliche. Where there's Ezo, there's an economy. Okay, so let's scan. That was an adventure. Another frigate. Okay. It's the moment of goddamn truth. Can I get out of here fast enough? Please. Oh. Yes. Faster than light jump successful. Okay. Oh. Just the one. I found something. Cool. Gehinam. A nearly atmosphereless, tidally locked planet orbiting a red dwarf star, Gehinam was the first place human explorers discovered a dedicated Prothean burial ground. While a few sites were saved for posterity, Eldfell Ashland Mining successfully lobbied to scout the rest of the planet for Element Zero. Ah, uh, why are you like this, humankind? And soon was embroiled in a scandal. Ugh, people are the worst. Mining teams were looting grave sites, searching for Ezo and other treasures, and many got rich off of the so-called cemetery business. While EAM officially brought a stop to the looting, its mining teams remain on the planet, prospecting the unclaimed territory and taking their ore to the Pamiot system for refining. Wow, I hate that. Travel advisory. Armed conflicts have broken out between miners and scientists staking claims to Prothean ruins. Visitors are advised to employ security while exploring unknown regions of the planet. What are we going to get? Hopefully... Oh, I... <laughs> Does that mean that we are looting graves too? Shepard. Shepard. A hundred percent. Okay, we've got enough to be able to get back. So the only one we took, we couldn't get is that one right there. Should we risk it? Oh, we shouldn't. He's gonna. Yeah, exactly. I would have fucked us. Oh. oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit. Okay, we're fine. Everything's fine. Hush. Everything's fine. <laughs> All right. What else is new? So everything with a reaper on it, basically, is what we need. Oh, Selenia Nebula, 9%. Okay. That clearly needs to be tended to. I think that's everything. Where was it? Here. Oh, I hope it has gas. Yay! And <laughs> zero. 
they're such a good skit. If you guys haven't discovered Brennan Lee Mulligan, he's an absolute delight. And I can't ever look at the number zero the same ever again. Okay, so here we have 100%. Oh. Well, wreckage. The Asari once had enormous solar collectors around the bluish white A0V star Loropi. Using the star's considerate heat to create anti protons for military starship fuel. Cool. Now, all that can be detected is scrap. Reapers emerged from dark space near the Salaya Nebula cluster and established a front. Laropi system, the starry fleet that guarded what used to be, oh, what used to be known as the Spota Station, cannot be found. It is scattered and destroyed. One can only hope that the backup reactors in the Kiplodon system do not fall, or the Asari fleet will have precious little fuel. Okay, so it looks like I need to scan this, but Signal oh confirmed. fuck! Okay, we didn't even alert anybody. Okay, that's fine. Um, we need to get this little boy. Oh, I need to scan him. Fuck. Of course. Ysilium. It's a minor rock planet that is not quite clear the ring of debris is at the edge of Lorby's orbits. It is believed to be an extrasolar capture. For several centuries, Ysilium supported a succession of mining colonies. First iridium, then titanium, and finally light metals like bauxite and alumina. <laughs> The planet was abandoned long before the Reaper invasion. Ooh. Ooh, a sniper unit. Very, very cool. Okay, now I gotta get the fuck out of here. <sighs> okay, we got this. Oh, 100% essence. We didn't even call them? Nice. Beautiful. We've done it. Not today. Okay. But anybody on the fringes? Just this Saturn wannabe. I found something. A bargain bin boy, if you will. <laughs> Hi, Tiana. <laughs> Hi, Tiana, sir. Is a Sebastian of research for the Asari? Boasting multiple observation outposts, glacial drilling stations, and educational institutions. While the planet's average temperature hovers near freezing, the equatorial band contains oceans and many freshwater rivers. Xenobiologists of all stripes often visited the planet, as its expansive facilities were a haven for the life sciences. The Reapers destroyed Haitiana's spaceport and its uniformed defense forces. As with other Asari planets, the Reapers forced the heavily biotic population into surrender through threats of massive retaliation rather than by... Oh, assault by husks alone. Yeah, because you can't do the Asari like that. Oh, a Saris guard. I don't know what it is, but it sounds cool. Okay, are we good? We're, we're decent. So we've got one more to find. There it is, there it is. Investigate, please. Yes, I would like fuel, please. Amazing. Goodbye. Faster than light jump successful. Man, we are just making easy work. Oops, fuck. <laughs> God damn it, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, these reapers. <laughs> They don't have anything on us today. Ugh, that boy's so close. Let's check down here, though. Okay, good. So, let's breeze through here if we can. Okay. Try to get all of these. Oh, shit, they're right next to each other. Hold on! Alton! The first mission to Alton, to Kuna's moon, was a century in the making. Elcor. The Elcor leaders felt resources for space travel could be better used on their homeworld. I mean, okay. And it took decades of persuasion to secure project funding. 
Archaic harvesting stations that recovered helium-3 from the moon's regolith were still functioning when the Reapers invaded. And the Elcor station there were, oh good, able to flee the system. Good, good, good. There we go. Nice! The Elcor helping out! Oh, I love it. Let's get this one. Hold on. I'm not ready! Dakuna, the Elcor homeworld! Okay, okay. Overflows with natural resources protected by law. From large deposits of precious metals to vast forests. The Elcor themselves live in rich grasslands near the equator. The majority of Dakuna settlements are tucked within this belt. As the conservative Elcor feel little desire to build outside their comfort zone. Their twin capitals are for migrations from the wet season to the dry season, a tradition made obsolete by modern technology, but still observed. I mean, it sounds kind of fun. After the destruction of the Elcor Navy, Reapers moved in their ground troops to occupy the cities. This has taken longer than most civilized worlds as the Elcor have spread out into smaller distant settlements, reflecting their preference for close-knit family communities instead of densely packed cities. to the ancients okay hopefully that'll inspire people to help us okay time to go just wanted to scan that on the way out okay good we got it evasion ha -ha. that will stay there for next time to make our lives a little easier Oof, this is going to be okay yeah look at all those hundreds and the 166 So, anybody far out? Not really. So let's start over here. I found something. Oh god, both of them. Please, may I? Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> oh no. Quiresia? A typical hydrogen helium gas giant, Quiresia, serves as a naval resource for fuel gathering and magnetic field discharge. The planet is surrounded by a band of seven large moons that form the necklace. Of reference to a legendary jewel owned by the ancient Asari queen for which Quiresia was named. Nice. That's such cool lore. Quiresia's orbit places it within the system's frost line, where gas giants do not usually form. For this reason, the planet is believed to be an extrasolar capture. The alternative, that its orbit is decaying, is a horrifying prospect to the tourism and immigration boards of Nevos, since they would be in the gas giant's eventual path. Right. What are we gonna get today? Oh. <laughs> Not to be ungrateful, but I'm really liking the cool lore and bits to help inspire people. Nevos, first discovered by Asari pioneers in 430 CE, Nevos is a vibrant garden planet, which is uh, the second today that looks pretty earthy and home to a thriving Asari colony. Sandy beaches and romantic twin moons fuel a bustling tourism economy, while practical and secretive corporate matters are handled in spiraling arcologies built along towering cliffs. Even though it has been colonized for centuries, Nevos feels a frontier away from regulation and oversight. Consequently, the number of influential political lobbies have established sizable presences, of course, they have on the planet. God damn it. Why have to ruin everything, capitalism? For my EU audience, uh, lobbying is basically just legally sanctioned bribery. Which is never a good thing. Rings of a loon! Taronda would be upset with us. All right, so we've got one more. Got 
got it. Uh, okay, we got it. It's gonna be fine. Everything's fine. We're gonna have to get bebop. Oh, actually, they're slow. Never mind. No bebopping. It was not necessary. Nice. Oh, perfect. We don't even have to like scramble. Nice. Is that, is that all of them? So everything with the Reaper has to have a percentage, preferably a hundred. You do not. But I, I seem to believe that I already tried to be here and it was bad. Because I know we went there, so we'll have to leave that for next time. Or, you know, after the next mission. Okay, okay. So, what we need to do... <sighs> I want to go look at our war assets. Commander. Campbell? Private Campbell, I should say. Probably shouldn't go on, on a real name basis. All right. Oh, oh, there are chairs down here. Oh, he's helping. I was like, why are you kneeling on the floor, my guy, if there are chairs? All right. Nice. So we're all the way up, but it looks like we're continuing to, oh, look, total melee strength. Oh, it's halved approximately. Okay, so this is our, our effective number. Ah, uh, because it's halved by that. Okay, cool. Math, I can do it. Elcor Flotilla! The Elcor Flotilla possesses a few cruisers and carriers, but its real value is troop transport. Which is great, because I know that Edie was talking earlier about us having trouble getting the Krogan everywhere. Perfect. Because of their shape, the Elcor carry shoulder-mounted heavy weapons. VI run systems handle reloading, targeting, and ammunition selectors. It is not unusual to see a troop of Alcor soldiers toting rocket launchers, chain guns, and other intimidating weapons on their backs as if they weigh nothing at all. Amazing. So, first fleet, it's probably just gonna have an update. This one. Ooh, is that the only one? Yeah, I think it's this one. The SSV Leipzig was the first Alliance frigate to field test the Thanix cannon, a compact version of a Reaper weapon developed after the Battle of the Citadel. The Leipzig's captain was so pleased with the results, she gave her unconditional recommendation that the Alliance begin mass producing the cannon as soon as possible. Oh. That is a shining recommendation indeed. Okay, is that the only one? Yeah. Fifth Fleet. So that should be updated with the other frigate that we found. Yes! The original SSV Hong Kong was destroyed in the Battle of the Citadel when its captain threw her ship in front of a blast meant for a dreadnought. The ship's frame was later melted down and incorporated into the framework of a new frigate rebuilt as its successor. Nice. Yes, sorry, thanks. So, here we go. A sniper unit, our Mali sniper unit. It's an elite team of Asari commandos who favor long-distance engagement, a mood. Some of the unit soldiers have augmented themselves with strength-boosting cybernetic implants, allowing them to fire heavier guns, like the 39-kilogram M98 Widow anti-material rifle with incredible precision. Saris Guard. They set out to stop blood pack mercenaries attempting to enslave Asari colonies in the Terminus system. What the fuck? After a ship-to-ship -ship fight, the commandos and mercs crash-landed. With no means to contact Thessia, the surviving Asari continued to engage the grounded blood pack, whittling down the frustrated slavers with traps, ambushes, and nighttime offensives. After nine days and more than a hundred casualties, the blood pack surrendered. The mercenaries were astonished to learn they had only been battling five Asari commandos! Wow. Wow. This only furthers my opinion that playing elves in in settings is is just such a complicated endeavor like in D&D &D, for instance 
Um, it's just, you cannot play like a 500 year elf within the way the mechanics work in D&D. Like if you were like a farmer for 500 years and then decided to pick up weaponry, that's great. But if you wanted to be like a blade singer, for instance, it takes elves 300 years to master blade singing. You think somebody with 300 years of experience is going to start at level one? Absolutely not. But I, I understand why the system works the way it works. It's because you, you can't compensate for things like that in the lore. Because it would just break the system for everybody. But Or it would, everyone would just play elves all the time because they would have to have so many extra stats to balance it out. But I digress. Although the guard downplayed their heroics, they became instant celebrities upon their return to Thessia. Bad bitches, all of them. Amazing. All right. What did we get for here? Advanced. Oh, we're doing a haptic optics array first. It's an experimental computer user interface. Cortical implants allow users to see screens projected in front of them. A user's eye movements are track, syncing to hand gestures as they sift through data. Y'all, that shit's so cool. While disorienting at first, people using the optics array report increased efficiency, and the technology has been adapted by several dozen engineers for use in the crucible. So it's kind of like augmented reality, but not? Very cool. Love. The advanced power relays are 15 kilometers insulated wiring connected to switch boxes that regulate the energy flow. Installing the relays in the crucible will prevent catastrophic power surges from overloading its systems. I like it. It's good. Oh. Did we get an update? Commander Shepard's interview with Diana Allers about the Geth emphasized their value as strong military allies. The Council reluctantly sent the Geth shipments of rare materials to upgrade ground users. Yes! Okay, good. Good things. I was worried. And the Turian. What do we have that's new? Oh. The Spec Ops team. Guard Captain Vidinos heads a special operatives team that distinguish itself in the war on Tatris, tracking down Turian separatist leaders opposing the hierarchy. During the war, the separatists rammed a ship traveling at FTL speeds into the heart of Tatris's capital. Vidinos's unit experienced their worst fighting in the Diluvian wildlands. Not wilderness. Unwelcoming marshes with a population deeply sympathetic to the separatist cause. Ooh, that doesn't sound good for them, but I'm super glad to have them here. Nice. Wow, that was super handy. I love that. We got so much accomplished, too. Okay, so it's, a, uh, it's time. It's time to go to the Citadel. It's time to turn in our quests. Ah. <sighs> I guess the the quest line as a whole is is piecemeal in the way that it is. Commander Shepard. Private Westmoreland. Because it kind of simulates what we would actually be going through. It would be too clean and composed and collected to have it all routine. Okay. Let's do it. I like how the Mass Effect just like tosses us. The Mass Effect relay, I should say. All right, let's get in here. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground transport? No, thank you. I'll handle it. Yes, Commander. I like it. She's like, don't worry, I got it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make use of the map. Oh, sorry, counselor. Okay, that's who we're supposed to be seeing. I don't, I don't want to do that first. So in Huerta, there is a consultant that we need to turn stuff into. Oops. You are sure of what you saw? Yes, Sergeant. Heard from your brother since then? Okay, it's just that. Sergeant. 
to the hospital first. Spectre status recognized. One moment, please. Honestly, if I was Shepard, I would have a hard time going back in this hospital. Now arriving at Puerta Memorial Hospital. Not only are all these people struggling, and it's just a very harsh reminder of what we're going through. I could just... Not after Thane. Excuse me. I recovered the rings of Alun. They're waiting in Bay D24. That's wonderful. Thank you. My people will treat this miraculous find as a call to support their local hospitals. Amazing. Yes, I'm seeing increased turnout as well. We may actually make it through this war. Perfect. Okay, so... Um, not embassies. Uh, did we have anything in purgatory? I didn't check purgatory, but we're about to. Now arriving at ward level. Oh! An angry Elcor. What is it, babe? I recovered the code of the ancients from Dakuna. It's waiting for you in Bay D24. With shock and joy. Really, this is wonderful news. Thank you, human. Sincerely, this will greatly aid our people. Yay! With sincere gratitude. Thank you, human. Yay! Perfect. Okay, do we have anything? Okay. Oh, Tally's here. We should go chat. See if they made any headway from that last conversation that she was having about getting supplies, I think. Okay, so to the commons we go. Spectre status recognized. One moment, please. I like how the elevator scans us. Now arriving at Presidium Commons. Okay. It was in four in the courtyard. Okay. Man. I keep forgetting how much wreckage there is here. Hey, Tally. Of course. We can have ships at the colony in 36 hours. Do you need medical support? No, evacuating the colony is more than enough. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador? I'm coordinating actions for the fleet while we're here. Evacuating colonies, bolstering Turian defense lines. Huh. I think it was right here. Three years ago to the day. What? This was where Seren's assassins fired at me. I'd just gotten to the Citadel. I didn't think I needed my barriers up. My mistake. I mean, I, I remember what happened, but I want to hear her tell the story. Saren had assassins after you? Right. I disabled the Geth and found that recording that proved he was working with the Reapers. I went to Ilium and tried to inform the authorities, but Saren's mercenaries attacked me. I barely escaped. I stowed away on a Turian freighter and came out here. I thought I was safe. You never told me about this. How bad was it? Got me in the arm. They used polonium rounds. I was running a fever in minutes. It was the first time I'd been really hurt on my pilgrimage. I ran to the council embassy, asked for protection, offered the data on Seren. The Turian clerk called me Soot Rat. He threatened to have me tossed off the station if I didn't leave. I wish that clerk could see you now. He just did. That was him back there. I don't think he remembers me. I'm tempted to remind him, but now's not the time. Next time we see him, we can just casually remark on it. Um, clearly what he did was wrong and racist. <laughs> Spacist? Spacist. Um... And I don't know, maybe confronting him would help change his mind. Not really, because he he should be kind to her because she's, for lack of a better term, a living being, right? Because I can't say human being, because this is Mass Effect. Um, it 
it doesn't matter whether she's successful or not. It matters because she's a a humanoid. There we go. We'll, we'll stick with that. I know it doesn't apply to all of them. Um, living creature might be better. I don't know. You know what I mean. And you're assisting him in spite of that. This war is too big for old grudges. You showed me that. We are at peace with the Geth. I can't waste my time on a Turian who made me angry. Besides, it all worked out. I made it to the wards. You found me. Happy ending. And now the Turians will get the aid they desperately need. I nearly reminded him who I was. Made him apologize, rubbed his nose in it. Maybe he and I both needed to grow up a little. The difference is that you helped when it counted. Thanks, Shepard. So did you. How fucking wholesome. Oh! A defense drone? Everything looks so peaceful. Oh, you should have been here a little bit ago. I mean, the smoke is still billowing. In here, you can almost forget about the war. Uh... I don't know about you, babe, but there's a lot of, uh, gunfire lodged in the walls. I never get tired of looking at this place. I'm glad it's comforting for you. I never thought they'd let a quarry in up here. The Presidium is so beautiful. Everything looks so peaceful. Yeah. I just wanted to run through her dialogue. The clutch is stabilized? Really? That is wonderful news, my sister. You wish to name the first hatch after the one who helped us? I think that's a wonderful idea. Oh no. <laughs> There's gonna be a little shepherd human running around. There's a little shepherd <laughs> Salarian running around. The clutch is stabilized? Really? Okay. That is wonderful news, my sister. Is that is that what we needed to do? No. Okay, so we need to go down here. Am I going the right way? No, I am not. I need to go the other way. Oh, I thought there was a speech um sign over him. Okay, so going down here should get me to four. Okay, good. That's what I want. Found another one. Yeah, the guys in Zakara did too. Disarmed there safely. No casualties. Nice work. Huh. I don't remember being able to chat with that man before. Okay, so this... Is this where I want to be? Just about. You. I've recovered the obelisk of Karza. It's waiting for you in Bay D24. You have? It's amazing. Thank you, Commander. That's going to help immeasurably with some very sensitive work. Good. How's the translation going? Really? Excellent. Well, hopefully it unlocks more intel from the archive. Amazing. Okay. Now... Oh, there's a refugee in the, the docks. Let's do that. And if I'm not mistaken, it should mean that the Asari Counselor is who we have left. Thanks for watching. For more content, you can check out these videos, or my stream on Twitch, or cosplay on Instagram, or my OnlyFans. All the links are in the description. Have a great rest of your day.